In the previous two videos, you've seen how things come apart, both the easy way and the hard way. Unfortunately, I'm not in here doing regular maintenance. I'm replacing a 2,500 mile old clutch disc. I'm going to cover the stuff you should check out while the transmission's out of the car. And first we've got the pivot ball. Alright, if it looks scuffed, it's worn. Replace it. Rough pivot balls are guaranteed to lead to a clutch fork failure. It should be smooth and shiny on all of its contact surfaces. The pivot ball is much harder steel than the cast iron fork, so a rough pivot ball cuts right through it. It weakens it at the pivot until it breaks. So, anyway, we've got a clutch fork. And um, this thing has a significant lever action. Notice where the pivot ball rides. It's closest to the fork end. So, a lot of movement here equals just a little bit of movement up here. So, uh, that provides a huge increase in the amount of force the hydraulics can apply to the pressure plate. The fork receives a lot of pressure right at that point, and that's normally the force point of it wearing out because it's balanced just on the pivot ball. I'll snap it on here. As a result, that always wears out first before the pivot ball. But if you're replacing one of them, you might as well replace both. It's just a threaded bolt with a 14 millimeter uh, bolt head on it, and you can replace that with a deep well. Uh, there are two ways a fork breaks, either at the pivot point, leaving you with uh, no pedal whatsoever, or one of these arms will break off. If the latter happens, the hydraulic force from the pedal will be asserted only on one side of the throwout bearing, making half the friction surface of the clutch grip harder than the other half when you're shifting. Uh, your disengagement point will feel like it's all over the place. The next thing to go will be the throwout bearing. and. Uh, Nothing can improve from that point, it only gets worse. Stop driving it if it happens to you because uh, it's sure to leave you stranded. If you think that you have this problem, you can twist the leg of the fork that sticks outside this hole. Pull the slave cylinder back towards the driver's side and pull back on the fork and you'll know if it's broken because it will not have the forks contacting the transmission there on both sides. You'll be able to twist it in one direction. Now, the throwout bearing is called that because when you change your clutch it's not reusable. There's nothing technical about that. You throw it out. All it is is a high pressure bearing that can withstand the load of the pressure plate force when the, when the clutch hydraulics are applied. Uh, the clutch is spinning on the flywheel and the fork is stationary. If you hear a hissing sound when you're off your clutch pedal and it goes away when you mash the pedal in, your throwout bearing is shot and it's grinding against the spring fingers of the pressure plate. I covered the Jesus clip in the other video. All it does is hold the throwout bearing on the shaft and the fork while you put the transmission back on the motor. Once it's on there, the bearing is sandwiched between the clutch and the fork and it isn't coming apart unless the center bearing fails. In that case, the Jesus clip was not your problem in the first place, but that doesn't mean you don't need to use it. I'm going to put all the stuff back together now and go over the other clutch parts. Now, One of the first things you want to do is check out where the uh, the uh, throwout bearing is going to ride on this bearing surface here. And you want to run your fingernail around it and see if you can find any rough spots. If you have anything that feels kind of rough or out of place, make sure it's not just dirt. If you feel it with your fingernail, you probably need to clean it up. I got something right there, right there, and it looks like I got a fish eye right there. Now if you see that, you might want to check the inside of your old throwout bearing and see if on one of the bearing faces, if uh, if you have anything rough. And you see, I got something right there. Let's see if I can get better light on that. I got something rough right there. Looks like a fish eye in that thing too. So what I'm going to wind up doing here is try to buff that stuff out because I don't want it leaving any rough spots on that thing or making any sticky points in the pedal. And in order to do that, what I do is I take some 600 grit sandpaper. And the reason I use 600 grit is because I don't want to actually remove any metal. All I want to do is just take off the high spots. Alright, so that's smooth now. 
Now you want to be careful because there's a thin spot and two thicker spot, or actually two thinner spots, one thick spot. And this is in between the two bearing surfaces, so it's not actually coming in contact with the shaft. And I'm trying to maintain the bearing surfaces on the outside while removing the fish eye. And those things happen because you get a piece of dirt or something big and chunky in there. And uh, it winds up getting ground back and forth against the uh, bushing on the input shaft. All right, that doesn't have a high spot on it anymore. And I don't want to do too much because I don't want to wipe out that bearing surface. First thing you want to do is grease that bearing surface up. You don't want anything binding on there. And put a dab of grease in the fork. Snap the fork on. Now, the way this uh, spring works here in the bearing is there's a groove that goes around it and you'll see that there's two little tabs that stick out you put this down in the groove and these pieces through the holes like so and it snaps on to the holes in the fork and it's very easy to do that if you do them both at the same time there you go That piece is on there. Just wipe that down. Let's not forget about the dowel pens. This piece right here is pretty important. These pieces, there's two of them in the transmission, but these dowel pins line the transmission up with the block. And it's really important that these things are kept in place when you're installing the transmission. They love to fall out. They gotta be there. This happens to be the one that has the M8 threads on the inside, which you can kind of see there. I think you can. Yes, you can. Now, remember that M8 bolt when it all goes back together. Here's the other dowel pin over here on the other side. And if these things come out, they will cause massive clutch failure. Make sure your axle seals aren't leaking. This one is the driver's side. And there's the passenger side. Make sure the seal for the output shaft for the transfer case isn't leaking. Make sure there's no in-out shaft play or side-to-side -side shaft play. There's the speed sensor. That's a reverse switch. Alright, there's the shift linkage. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse. If you have a hole right there in your transmission, there's supposed to be a little rubber mushroom cap breather thing here. If you squeeze that, oftentimes you get gear oil all over the place. That's the breather for the for the actual gearbox. Another thing you should always do is to inspect your. Uh, Inspect your transmission mounts and motor mounts. The way we took this off, we left this uh, front mount attached. Yes, it's a powder coated mount. Actually, I want that a little bit loose. Or it won't line up on the cross member. One thing I want to talk about is shimming the fork if necessary. Before you take your car apart and before you start doing the clutch job, you should check this lever right here. This is the clutch fork. That's the fork hole. The fork hole. The hole with the fork in it! Anyway, um, what's going on with this is you want this to line up either halfway or on this side of things. And the reason why is because of the distance of travel that the clutch slave has to push this arm. If it starts to apply pressure on this side, you run out of hole. You run out of fork hole. You want to have enough fork hole to be able to actuate the clutch in its full range. So the way you solve this problem, if your fork ends up on this half of the equation, is to shim the pivot ball. I'm going to rip this thing back out for a second and you'll see that my pivot ball is shimmed. Now the reason why I did this was to bring everything back into the correct geometry. 
and you see there's just a washer around it. It's a pretty thick one actually, uh, but as parts wear, the distance this sits at at rest begins to change. It begins to slip backwards and uh, you know different manufacturers of flywheels and stuff can contribute to that. But if you put your transmission back in the car, you run two bolts down to make sure it stays flush and the fork is sitting on this side of the hole, go ahead and take it back out of the car, pull that ball out and shim that piece. Remember that the fork is a lever so a little shim makes a big difference in where that lever sits. Mm -hmm.